three errors. Oh my goodness. You can't really pick how big your own head is, but you can sure pick how big the head of your tennis racket is. Hey folks, if you're deciding which racket to buy next, uh, there are a lot of things you should take into consideration. Um, you might consider the grip size, the length of the racket, the weight, which we talked about last week. Um, but also one of the important things you want to consider is the head size of the racket, which we'll be covering in our video today. Um, but we're also going to be covering all these other topics in other short videos. So make sure you hit the subscribe button so you'll be getting notifications uh, whenever we launch a new video. So, you know, you can stay up to date with that. And you also show support to us, which would be pretty amazing. So um, anyways, just jumping into today's topic. The head size of the racket is pretty important because it's going to influence your game in three different areas. The first one is going to be how much power you're going to get. So essentially, the bigger the head size of the racket, the more power you're going to get. So if you're just starting out now and you haven't really dominated your strokes yet, you can't generate that much power, you should probably go for a racket with a little bit of a bigger size head size. But um, if you're more an, of an advanced player, you probably want more control. So you should probably pick a racket with a smaller head size. Um, so for instance, I've been playing for uh, over 15 years and through all the time I was, I was able to decrease the head size um, of my racket because more, I would say different things became more important to me. Um, the more advanced, as I got stronger, I was able to um, prioritize control rather than than power because I was able to generate that power myself. So if you're a beginner, you want more control or sorry, if you're a beginner, you want more power, uh, which means a, a bigger head size. But if you're more of an advanced player, you probably want to stick to more control, uh, which will come with a smaller head size. The second aspect of your game that going that's going to be influenced by the head size of your racket is going to be the size of the sweet spot. So if you're not really familiar with what the sweet spot means, it's essentially just the area where you can, in the racket, where you can make contact with the ball and the ball will go exactly um, where you want on the other side of the court. Um, if you're just starting out now, you might not know that uh, when you hit a shot outside the sweet spot, uh, the ball is going to shank and kind of you're not going to have control over exactly where it goes. So if you aimed at the certain spot, but you hit it, you make poor contact with it outside the sweet spot, um, chances are that the ball is not going to land where you want. So if you pick a racket with a bigger head size, that automatically is going to mean that your sweet spot will be bigger. A smaller head size will mean that you're gonna have a smaller sweet spot. So that means that you're gonna have to be more precise uh, when you're making contact with the ball. Now the third reason you should pay attention to the size of the head of your racket is going to be how maneuverable it is. Maneuverable, that's a tough word. Um, but essentially a racket with a bigger head size, it's going to be harder to you know, change grips and if you're at the net, you're not going to be able to move it as easily. While a racket with a smaller head size is going to be a lot more um, a lot faster to move around. So if you're a beginner and you're playing against other beginners, chances are that the ball will be coming at you at a much slower pace than if, you're, if you are an advanced player. So having a racket with a big head size is not going to be that harmful for you. While on the other hand, um, if you're an advanced player and you're getting very fast shots coming at you, you're going to need to be able to move that racket quickly. So once again, you want to stick to a racket with a smaller head size. So just to recap, the three areas that the head size of your racket will influence your game will be first, how much power you get, second, the size of the sweet spot of the racket, and third, how maneuverable that racket is going to be. 
So now that we kind of get a little bit of, of the big picture, um, figured it will be important to understand how the racket size, the racket head size is measured. So it's actually quite simple. Essentially what you would do is you would measure the racket from its widest point, then multiply that for, by the racket's longest point, and then multiply that by 0 0.785. And by doing that, you come up with the size of, of the head of your racket. Um, obviously, uh, if you look up online, you're gonna be able to find that all the information and usually you'll be able to find it either in here or on the sides of the racket. Um, but essentially that's how you would measure it if you wanted to do it yourself. So even though each racket is going to have its particular head size, uh, we classify rackets into four different main head size categories. When it comes to racket head size, most rackets will have a head size that falls between 85 square inches and 125 square inches. And as I mentioned before, um, we usually divide these into four different categories. The first one is the midsize, and this is the racket that most players use. Uh, its head will have a head size of between 85 square inches and 97 square inches. Uh, so these rackets will give you um, very little power, but uh, on the other hand, um, they'll give you a lot of more control and maneuverability, so that's why most of the pros choose it. The second category with a head size a little bit bigger is the midsize plus, uh, which has a head size of between 97 square inches and 104 square inches. Um, some professional players do choose these rackets, but uh, the majority of times it's going to be more of a, a club player or college players or or you know, even some a few juniors will choose this head size racket. Um, these rackets will give you uh, more power than the midsize, but um, they'll be lacking a little bit more in terms of control. Third category, it's already more for beginners and they're called oversized rackets. Uh, their head size will fall between 104 square inches and 115 square inches. These rackets are mostly for beginners. Uh, so if you're just starting out, but you still wanna get a quite a decent racket, uh, you should look for something in the oversized category. Um, these rackets will give you a lot of power. The sweet spot, sweet spot is quite large. Um, and since you won't need that maneuverability, uh, this is a great racket for you. And finally, uh, the super oversized categories have a head size of between 115 square inches and 125 square inches. And these are actually even a little bit difficult to find. Uh, you might not find them in most stores, but uh, you'll be able to find them in online websites like Tennis Warehouse. And these will be a good fit for you if, I mean, if you have, might have some injuries and you need to get as much power as possible, or if you can't move that well and you need to get a, a quite a significantly large head size, um, these might be a good fit for you. But Otherwise, you should stick to either the midsize, midsize plus, or oversize categories, depending on which tennis level you're playing at. So just to recap, if you're a beginner, you should probably get a racket with a significant, a quite a large head size. So um, you could pick a racket in the oversized category or even in the mid plus, uh, because once again, you'll be able to generate more power, um, you get a bigger sweet spot, and as of now, you do not have that need for that much maneuverability. Um, so as you continue improving, you should probably, you know, move towards a racket with a smaller head size, because once again, you get more control um, and you don't need that big of a sweet spot, but you, in exchange, you get a lot more maneuverability. So if you enjoyed this video, um, we'll be coming up with more um, racket specs broken down uh, once again, make sure you subscribe and because you get the notifications and get access to those videos straight away. Uh, but otherwise, we hope you enjoyed it.